Hello everyone, I'm Sean Kelly at Stock Targets. Today we're going to talk about Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia oil production, mainly in regards of the dropping oil prices of the last few weeks. Now in January 2015, oil prices fell as low as $49 just a few days ago. And um, we need to go through the fundamentals of oil to understand where we are and where we're headed from now. The purpose of this video is to assess the oil reserves of Saudi Arabia, which is the main oil producer and main oil reserves in the world, and uh, to draw the proper conclusion from there to see where we're going and what the right investment de decisions should be. Saudi Arabia is still and remains the world's largest oil producer, but, and there's a big question mark here, the Saudi oil production has shown signs of weakness over the last five, six years and uh, showing roughly a 0% growth in daily production. The Saudi Energy Ministry has always claimed uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia has a capacity to increase their production by 20% at any, at any given time, but we have to come to the conclusion that this is now false and wrong. The Saudi Arabian oil reserves seem overstated. We had original oil in place of about 268 billion barrels in 1948. and. Um, we can today say that that number is perhaps even exaggerated. 220 to 240 billion barrels seems to be a more realistic number. Up until today, 145 billion barrels of oil have been extracted in Saudi Arabia. So given the reserves, that means that 55% of all the oil in Saudi Arabia has been pulled out of the ground. And this has a pretty deep meaning because Saudi Arabia has therefore peaked its production. Several signs for this oil production peak, one being that no new discoveries have been made since 1968. Over the last 10 years, 50% of the new oil wells are now counted to be offshore and um, only 50% of the oil wells are still on the mainland. And therefore the mainland oil reserves are not as big as planned and that they are slowly moving out of that area and going to where there's the oil remaining in Saudi Arabia which is offshore. As said most new wells are offshore in the Persian Gulf where the oil is more difficult, slower and more expensive to access than on mainland. This leads us to take a good close look at what the main oil field of Saudi Arabia has been doing over the years. It is the Gawar oil field, the largest oil field in the world, discovered in 1948 and started production in 1951. The original oil in place in that field was between 170 and 190 billion barrels, in other words 10% of world oil reserves and up to 60% of the Saudi Arabian reserves. Now we're making the claim that this large oil field is nearly empty and that there's not a whole lot of new potential opening up in Saudi Arabia which can have serious effects on the world oil exports. The Gawa oil field contained originally between 85 and 115 billion barrels, 105 to 112 billion barrels being the latest numbers we're looking at. And we can say today that 75 to 80 percent of the oil from the Gawar oil reserves in the Gawar oil field have been extracted and are no longer available. Looking at the past production of the Gawar oil field, 85 billion barrels have already been extracted on that field between 1951 and 2014. That means it's 70 to 80 percent empty, 80 percent being closer to the real figure. 
That means that another 30 billion barrels are recover, uh, recoverable from the Gawa oil field, but this will also mean that we'll have a decrease in production from that field of 5 to 7 percent per annum for the next 20 years. So in order to have a clear view of what is happening in Saudi Arabia, let's first of all look at uh, just Gawar in itself. According to our numbers, the Gawar field has peaked its production in 1998. And now the production on the field is down 35% from that number, which is a clear sign that we are in decline and that the field is running slowly on empty. Today only 45% of the Saudi production comes from Gawar and you can measure that in a very simple manner only 45% of the oil wells in Saudi Arabia are still on mainland which is essentially Gawar. In 2009 CO2 injections have been be have begun in the field when do you inject CO2 in order to increase pressure and push out more oil? Well, pretty much when the oil field is 75% empty. The measurements we have received in 2012, the Gawar oil field is now 35 to 50% water. Water injections have begun in 1998 in order to increase pressure, better known as enhanced oil recovery techniques and um, this is another sign that when you get 50% of water that means that the oil field is 80% empty. Here a description of the Gawa oil field as we have backtracked it over the years. These statistics are quite difficult to obtain we have them and we think they're quite accurate. Here's the production of the Gawa oil field. In red, the belt shaped curve, you have a theoretical peak in 1998. Before 1998, 56 billion barrels have been pulled out of the Gawa field. That means that after 1998, you have another 56 billion barrels left. Meanwhile, looking at the production, we see that the Gawa oil field has produced 29 billion barrels meanwhile, which is another 26%, which means that until 2014, we at least have emptied the field by 76%. Another 27 billion barrels are available in the ground at Gawa, which is another 24% of total, according to our estimates. Summarizing on the Gawa field, 75 to 80 percent empty, 85 billion barrels produced out of the 110, 115 billion barrels recoverable. The water cut is 35 to 40 percent. CO2 injections have begun in 2009. The majority of all new Saudi oil wells have been drilled offshore over the last 10 to 12 years. Gawa has been historically 65 percent of Saudi's oil production now slipped to 45, should drop to 40% by 2020. This means the Gawa oil field will decrease its production by 5 to 7% per annum, regardless of what your, what your oil recovery, you know, recovery techniques are, and um, that it has a main impact on the total production of Saudi Arabia over the next decade. Here you can see the production of the Gawar oil field by comparison to the total oil production in Saudi Arabia. In red, the Gawar is in blue. The Gawar production in 2014 has been about 45% of the total production in Saudi Arabia. Given the 5 to 7 percent drop on the Gawar field per annum, we're going to see a drop of 2 to 4 percent per annum in the total output of Saudi Arabia for the coming years. The implications are the following 1 percent of world exports less is what is going to come out of 
Saudi Arabia due to that slowdown. That is also 4% of Saudi Arabia's exports. The national consumption in Saudi Arabia also is increasing by 2% per annum due to population growth, transportation, desalinization, agriculture, industry, and so forth. That surplus available for exports is there shrinking more and more. Here again is the oil production in Saudi Arabia in blue. In red, the theoretical bell curve which this production is following. We see a peak in 2011. Therefore, before that peak, half of the oil reserves of Saudi Arabia have been extracted, approximately 134 billion barrels. That's a clear measurement. We can go back and get all the daily productions and we wind up with 134 billion barrels produced up until 2011. So after 2011, we have another 134 billion barrels to go. Between 2011 and 2014, another 10 billion barrels, almost 11 billion barrels have been produced. That is again a clear statistic. Right now we have 124 billion barrels left and that is pretty much 12% of the world oil reserves, but all that is shrinking real fast. In green, the consumption of oil in Saudi Arabia, as you can see, sustained growth over the last years, and um, that growing consumption will leave less and less margin for export, and uh, that will catch up one day, but it's still pretty far out. So here again, statistically seen, this leaves 124 billion barrels in the ground in Saudi Arabia, which is mostly offshore, as we demonstrated already. Approximately 30 billion left on mainland. The remainder is offshore. 47% of the original oil reserves of Saudi Arabia have therefore been extracted, which confirms uh, this production peak of uh, 2011. So to the question which many people ask themselves, has Saudi Arabia peaked their oil production? I say unequivocally yes, even if it's not very apparent. Statistically the peak has happened in 2011 and from now it can only go south in terms of production into a terminal decline. Given this fact, is it possible for Saudi Arabia to increase their production or their output by 20% as they keep claiming for the last 10 years? I say no, it's close to impossible. They will not be able to increase their production regardless of what they say. And the, um, the numbers show it. Now with an oil price at $45, I let you discover this chart produced by Deutsche Bank, all the oil exporting countries. What oil price do they need in order to balance their budget? Today with an oil price at 45, mid-January, well you can see that this is very much situation where everybody's losing money not one single country is making money Saudi Arabia needs $95 a barrel to balance the budget Russia needs a hundred and the big oil producing companies such as Exxon Mobil or Chevron and other equivalent companies they all need a barrel and at least 70 in order to make a profit so everybody's losing money today I see only one direction in which the oil can go from now. Maybe it still hasn't found its bottom below 50, but it can only swing back up and go back to where the oil price is economically viable, which is somewhere between 90 and $100. Why not even $110 a barrel? 
Saudi Arabia, like all the other countries, will have to slow down their production in order to let the prices come back up because it's completely unsustainable if the OPEC countries do not decide to reduce their production. It will be the big private companies such as, such as ExxonMobil or Total or Shell or Royal Dutch or Chevron who will do so. Prices can only go up from here and um, they are at the level which is very very unsustainable for everybody. This is Sean Kelly at Stock Targets and as usual keep your eyes open.